because you're so used to playing the violin you've been playing the violin for 15 years and then now you have to explain to someone how to hold the violin trust me it's not easy so this is very suitable for new teachers and then this is also good for self-taught beginner violinists new skill during quarantine so for those of you who have been staying at home for the past two months and maybe you decided hmm I think I should pick up a new skill. So while other people are making Dalgona coffee and doing pasta brush challenge on TikTok, you could be learning the violin and be outstanding. And of course, the last one, for all violinists, for all musicians, I hope this will be useful for you. Okay, let's move on. So why fundamental? So maybe at this point, you, you might be thinking, why am I wasting my time listening to this person telling me how to hold my violin? I know how to hold my violin. Don't tell me what to do. Teach me how to play Mendelssohn violin concerto instead. But hold on a second, bahasa Indonesianya, jangan ngegas dulu kakak. Ada alasannya. So I'm going to tell you why fundamental of violin is very important. So having a strong, solid, basic in violin is very important because you know why? Playing the violin is very unnatural. It's not natural at all. You are forced to hold your instrument in such a way that is very not comfortable for your body. So when you stand up, okay, kalau kita berdiri nih, our arms are hanging by our side, right? Kayak tangan kita tuh di kanan kiri gitu loh. And then when you play the piano, for example, you do this. When you play the cello, you do this. When you play the violin, you do... You twist everything. It's very uncomfortable. It's very unnatural. So you have to compromise. You have to train harder than any other instrumentalist. Okay? And also speaking from experience, um, I'm from a small city in Indonesia, I'm from Palembang, right? So 10, 15 years ago, when I just started learning music, we don't have many violin teachers, we don't have many music school. Di Palembang, 15 tahun lalu, gak banyak guru biola, gak banyak sekolah musik. So I have to travel back and forth, Palembang, Jakarta, Palembang, Jakarta, just to take music lesson. And apparently, that was not enough. And then, when I went... Um, when I went to university, um, thank God I got accepted to university, um, my teacher realized that um, most of my basics were wrong. And it took me two semesters just to learn how to play with a straight bow. Because apparently I've been playing in a wrong way for about eight years. So it's very embarrassing and all my friends were like playing Brahm Sonata, Mozart Concerto and I had to go back to Kruzza 1 and Suzuki 5 just to play with a straight ball. Okay, so I don't want any of you to go through the same thing. That's why I really want to emphasize on the importance of having a strong basic. Okay, so I have some quotes here just to make me look smart and credible having some quotes, you know. So the first one, it is impossible to underestimate the importance of the first elementary practical steps in the long process of mastering the violin. And then the habits formed in the early period of training directly influence the whole later development of the student. And violin is one of the instruments that requires meticulous care at the initial stage of the study. Okay, makanya aku mau kasih tahu sekali lagi betapa pentingnya punya teknik yang kuat dalam main biola. Because if you don't have a strong basic, you're gonna struggle later. How are you going to play Tchaikovsky violin concerto? It's gonna take you half an hour. If you're already very tired holding your violin, you're gonna struggle later. Okay, so these are the three books that I've been studying, that I've been reading to be here today explaining to you guys. So whatever I'm telling you today, it's not just my opinion it's not just a random thought from a 22 year old girl trying to look cool it's actually from credible sources it's from these books so these are um, i must say the most popular and influential violin book that is still widely used until today so kalau kalian les biola mungkin guru-guru kalian itu belajarnya dari buku-buku ini gitu so the books are the first one, Leopold Auer, Violin Playing As I Teach It. So Auer is a close friend of the Schumann family, Robert Schumann and Clara Schumann and Tchaikovsky. And fun fact, 
Tchaikovsky originally originally dedicated his concerto. The, so Tchaikovsky violin concerto was originally dedicated to Allah, but then Allah told Tchaikovsky this concerto is impossible to play. And then Tchaikovsky was so heartbroken, he decided to dedicate it to someone else. And then the second one is the art of violin playing by Carl Flesch. So if you're a violinist and you're practicing scales now, most probably the scales that you are using is the one developed by Carl Flesch. And then the last one, Principles of Violin Playing and Teaching by Ivan Galamian. Ivan Galamian is known as the best violin teacher of the 20th century. He taught at Juilliard and he was also the teacher of Isaac Perman, one of the most popular violinists today. So I got everything from this book. So what will be discussed today? I have four topics. The first one is holding the violin, holding the bow, intonation, and also vibrato. So let's get started. Okay, so first one, holding the violin. Okay, what do you guys think about this? Do you think this is the right way of holding the violin? Is any of you holding the violin like this? Or is there any of you who think this is the right way of holding the violin? Because if because if yes, um, the exit is right there, you can please leave. No, I'm just kidding. I'll tell you how to hold the violin. So this is wrong. Please don't do this. This is Eddie, bad Eddie. Don't be like Eddie. So how to hold the violin? As you can see, I already compiled the three different methods from three different books. So the first point by our, so when you hold the violin, make sure your eyes are fixed on the violin. So I'm just gonna, I need to see myself. Okay, so make sure your eyes are fixed on the violin. So make sure you can see your own fingers. Jadi, kira-kira, Pokoknya, pastiin kalian bisa ngeliat jari kalian sendiri. Make sure you can see your own fingers. I know some very old Russian method that will tell you to do that. Like very far to the left and they will hold it like this. Maybe if you watch some YouTube video, you, you still can see some people play like that. Um, so according to that method, if you want to play the violin, you don't need to see your fingers. You just need to feel your fingers. But I think that doesn't really make sense because if you can't see your fingers, how will you be able to improve your intonation, improve your fingering? So I have to agree with Awa for this. Eyes fixed on the violin, make sure you can see your own fingers. First thing first. And then by flesh and galamian, place your violin on the collarbone. Apa sih bahasa Indonesia nya? Collarbone in sini. So place your violin on the collarbone with some extent on the left shoulder. Jadi tinggal taruh aja di sini, terus agak ke kiri sedikit gitu. Yeah. Also by Galamian, same thing. Resting the violin on the collarbone and then support lightly with your left hand. So do not support your violin entirely with your left hand, so just lightly with your left hand. So I'll repeat, eyes fix on the violin, make sure you can see your fingers, place on the collarbone, taro aja, udah pasti nyaman. Place on the collarbone, a little bit to the left, okay? That's all you need, you're good to go. Okay, second point, left arm, tangan kiri, thrust forward under the violin. And then you can also turn your left arm inwards around 90 to 100 degrees. But this one is depends on you, depends on your arm and your fingers. If you have long fingers and long arm, you can just hold it straight, lurus aja, you, you're good to go. But some people with short fingers, like me, I have to tilt my arm a little bit inwards, jadi harus agak ke dalam gitu, around 100 degrees, so I can reach more notes on the G string because I have short fingers, okay? And then according to Galamian, there is no exact rule as long as you're comfortable. That's why I was telling you, Galau, if you have long arm, you can just hold it straight. If you have shorter fingers, you can tilt your arms a little bit. So as long as you're comfortable, as long as you can make good sound, you're good to go. Okay, the third point by our raise violin as high as possible. Hmm, how many of you think this makes sense? Well, personally to me, it doesn't really make sense, especially if you tell your little students to raise your violin as high as possible, 
they're, they're gonna do silly stuff they're gonna do that or whatever they want to do so i think this is not the best way explaining to your students how to hold your violin but i'm just putting it right there so you guys can see you guys can compare and you guys can pick which method works the best for you so i believe our has his own reason explaining why we should raise our violin as high as possible um but i think i still think this is not the best way so I would like to refer more to Flash and Galamian. So according to Flash, too high, too low, not good. Just just hold it straight, la. What is so hard about it? Just hold it straight. And I think most of us are holding our violin straight today. So I think this is good. Just hold your violin straight, not too high, not too low. Just hold it straight. And according to Galamian, it's better to hold your violin higher than lower and i also agree with this because holding your violin lower um it's not very good for your posture you're gonna slouch and then it's gonna be very hard for you to reach the high notes and if you put your violin higher it's a lot easier to play high position and also because we have the f holes here right so these holes project the sound to your audience if you hold your violin higher these holes will face directly to your audience and they will be able to hear you better. So in, under some circumstances, you can hold your violin higher, but never hold your violin lower. It's not good for you, okay? And the last point is about shoulder rest. So how many of you are using shoulder rest now, playing the violin and using shoulder rest? I, I actually use it. I use shoulder rest and it's, it's comfortable for me. But according to our, he would recommend avoid, avoid using the shoulder rest. But the reason being is back in the days, the, valid, uh, the shoulder rest that they had is different from what we have today. So 100 years ago, the shoulder rest is more like a cushion, like a pad that you have to stick at the back of your violin. So it absorbs the sound of your violin. It changes the tone of your violin. That's why it's not good to your shoulder rest 100 years ago. But now that we have the modern shoulder rest, I think it's totally acceptable to your shoulder rest. And even if you read the one by Flash, he was like, yay, the shoulder rest. Of course we need shoulder rest. And he was explaining that um, the distance between our shoulder, human shoulder, to your jawline average is four to eight centimeters. And then the thickness of your violin is only about three to four centimeters. So imagine playing the violin without the shoulder rest and then having a five centimeter gap. When you shift from high position to low position, your violin is gonna fly, trust me. That's why it's the best to have shoulder rest. And also if you have shoulder rest and then you just hold the violin, it feels comfortable right away. So I would recommend using shoulder rest. But in the end of the day, if you don't need shoulder rest, you don't need to use it. And even by Galamian, he was he was telling us that it's really up to you. If you need shoulder rest, if you have long neck, if you need shoulder rest, then use it. If you don't need shoulder rest, then don't use it. Save money, okay? These are some good examples of holding the violin. So if there's any violin teachers here and you need to take a screenshot of this, feel free to do so. And for you guys who have violin next to you, maybe you can try it. You can try for a little bit. So if you see the first picture, that guy looks very happy. He can see his own fingers. His violin is pretty much straight. And then left arm thrust under the violin. And then also, Oh, I need to close this so you guys can see. Okay, so, and if you look at his thumb, it, it, it looks very nice just by the side of the violin neck. Okay, so make sure your thumb does not stick upwards too much. Jadi, jempol kalian tuh jangan sampai keluar gitu loh. Kayak cukup di samping aja, kayak gambar itu. So you can just, actually just look at this picture. This is really good. This is the really good way of holding the violin. Okay, so I think that's all about holding the violin. We can move on to the next topic. So this is our parts of the bow. So we have the tip. I need to see myself. Sorry. Okay, so ada tipnya, and then we have the bow hair, bow stick and then frock and then screw. So the screw is basically to tighten up and to loosen up your bow. And always make sure to make your bow loose before you keep it um, in your case. Okay, so one more time, we have tip and then stick and then hair 
and then frog and screw. Okay. So next one. So we are going to practice a proper bow hold. How to hold the bow? Again, I have three different opinions, three teaching approaches from three different books. I believe they are all good. There's, there's no right or wrong or which one is the best. I just want you guys to be able to see and to compare and then pick one that suits you the best. So the first one by our, he says, there is no exact rule indicating which ones of your fingers should press the stick. Um, well, with this, I believe he was just trying to tell us that back in the days, he was, he was giving example of some good violinists back in his days. So he said, Sarasate, Isai, Paganini, and all the good violinists, they have different ways of holding their bow, but they all produce amazing sound. So it doesn't matter. But if you're a teacher and then you want to explain to your student at the very initial stage, I think this is not the best way of telling your student, there's no exact rule, do whatever you want and they will do this, trust me. So let's look at another opinion by Flash and Galamian for that. So according to Flash, your index finger, telunjuk, exerts sideway pressure, jadi ke arah samping gitu, at your middle joint. So your finger has first join, middle join, and then your knuckle. Jadi, if you want to hold the bow, the pressure is on your middle joint, the sendi yang tengah. Gitu. And then, pressure and your weight is provided by this finger. And then the balance by your pinky. Jadi, tekanannya dari jari telunjuk, dan balance-nya di jari kelingking. This is what flash um, this is how Flash explains how to hold the bow. And then by Galamian, he recommended practicing without the bow at first. Jadi latihannya jangan pakai bow dulu, pakai tangan kalian aja cukup. So tip of your thumb, jempol, against your second finger. And also I have to tell you, um, in violin, we don't count the thumb. This is your first finger, second, third, and fourth, okay? In piano, you count this. In violin, you don't. So one, two, three, four. So tip of your thumb. Mungkin kita bisa coba sama-sama. We can try together. Just practice without the bow. So tip of your thumb against your second finger. Can we all do that? Just quickly do that. Mm -hmm. Tip of your thumb against your second finger. And then later, you can try practicing with... Um, Oh, some people have their bow. If you have the bow, you can try it together. Let's try it together. Okay, so tip of your thumb against your second finger. Do that. Okay, and then you can try holding your bow. So do exactly the same thing, but just with the bow now. Okay, and then second finger curve over the stick. Jadi tinggal curve aja di atas stick bow kalian. And then your third finger, aka your um, ring finger, jari manis, reaches over the frog, jadi kayak agak di stretch gitu, and then your um, pinky, jari clinking on the stick, jadi di atas, bukan kayak gini, enggak di bawah gini, but on the stick, okay, and then make sure that your index finger is giving sideway pressure on the middle joint, middle joint, second finger, third finger, and then fourth finger on the stick, and then always, always curve your pinky, Jadi bukan kayak gini, bukan neken gitu, like you don't press it, but should be curved. Okay, I, I can't see everyone from this point of view, but if you have your bow, you can try. Because I'm sharing my screen, so I can't see everyone. Yeah, oh, looks good, Felicia. Felicia, that looks really good. Good job. Okay, so practice this way, guys. This is the best way of holding the bow. Okay, alrighty. So if we look at the second row on this table, the three authors are basically saying the same thing. Find the most comfortable position. Fingers fall into position naturally. And then by flash, and again, personal taste. At the end of the day, it's all about your personal taste. And Galamian says natural and comfortable. And I think um, if you follow the rules, these are the basic rules that you have to try to follow. But at the end of the day, if it's not comfortable for you, if you are being a very good student and you're doing everything like this, holding the viewable very good, but you're not making good sound, I think there's no point. So these are the basic 
you have to try to follow this, but you have to experiment and find which one is the best for you. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if you can see that. That is how you should curve your pinky. Jadi, pinky uh, clinking harus agak ditekuk gitu. Not flat like that. You have to curve it a little bit. So, these are the examples of good bow hold. So, the first picture is how you have to practice without your bow. So, contact point of your thumb against your second finger yang tadi kita udah coba, the one we tried just now. And then, the second picture is the bow hand, a good way to hold the bow. And then, if you are holding your bow correctly, trust me, you will be able to move your bow around easily, like the third picture. Okay, so again, if there's any violin teacher here and you need to take a screenshot of this, feel free to do so. And for students, if you have your bow with you, you can try. Kalian boleh lihat gambar yang ada di sini dan dicoba. Okay, semoga nyaman. Kalian juga harus cari posisi mana yang paling nyaman buat kalian. Try your best to follow this, but then you also need to experiment and find like which angle is the best for you so you can make a beautiful sound, okay? Nggak ada gunanya kalian ikutin ini, paksa buat ikutin, tapi kalian nggak bisa main dengan baik. There's no point, okay? Try your best to follow, but you also need to adjust. You need to experiment on your own. Okay, I guess we can move on. The intonation. So intonation is definitely the biggest problem if you play the violin, right? Because the violin doesn't have frets, unlike guitars. Kalau kalian main gitar, kalian bisa lihat mau taruh di mana jarinya. But if you play violin, you can't, you physically can't see the notes. You, you don't know where to put your fingers. If you play piano, you can, you can just press. But this one, you can't. So you have to train very hard for that. Well. To be honest, I don't know how many years you will need to practice your intonation. It's been 15 for me and I'm still counting. So I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. So, okay, let's look at the first one by our. So our says practice skills. Oh, I know how much you hate skills because I also hate skills. But skills is the best way to improve your intonation by really understanding the whole tone and the half tone relationship so skills is basically a collection of whole tone and half tone right? jadi tangga nada kalian tuh adalah tone sama semitone kan basically so you really need to know which notes are whole tone apart which notes are semitone apart and then by doing that, you will be able to improve your intonation a lot, according to our. And then I will also share you one secret from this book. Oh, also, if you're a violin teacher, make sure to read at least one of the books yang aku tunjukin di awal tadi. Try to read at least one. Maybe you can read this. This is very short. It's like, I don't know, 99 pages. You can just pop it in your bag and then read it on your way, on your Gojek ride from Mall Kelapa Garden to Grand Indonesia. I think you'll finish this. It's very short. So please, please read at least one of the books. So there's a secret from this book. I'm going to tell it to you guys. So, so according to our, if your half, half steps are not sufficiently near each other, your intonation will always be dubious. Jadi kalau semitone kalian itu enggak rapet banget, kalau semitone kalian itu enggak dekat banget, your intonation will always be, you will always be out of tune, basically. So your semitone really needs to be very close to each other. That's the secret. And then later, if you practice, actually, and you pay closer attention to your intonation, you will realize that one, one of the biggest problems that causes you to play out of tune is your semitone. Trust me, this is very interesting. So the biggest problem for intonation is usually your semitone. Just make sure your semitone are always very close apart, like almost no gap, okay? And then for practicing scales, go over several scales in major and minor key. First, play one octave. And then when you're comfortable with one octave, go up two octave. So first, play separate bows. Da, 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 da. And then after you're comfortable, play legato. Four notes. After you're comfortable with legato four notes, play eight notes and then 12 notes and as much as you can. And when you play scales and you want to improve your intonation, 
you really need to play slow. Kenapa harus main slow? Why do you need to play slow? Because your ears need time to listen to what you're playing. Your ears need time to digest. And your brain needs time to tell you what to do. Your brain needs time to tell you if you're flat or you're sharp. If you play too fast and then you just brush through everything, your ears won't be able to catch and you will never be able to improve your intonation. Okay? So second one, second point by flash. So according to flash, in physics, in science, playing in tune is impossible. This is very interesting. I will explain to you um, on the next slide. But according to him, according to flash, Playing in tune is impossible. Jadi basically, main in tune tuh gak mungkin. It, it's not gonna happen. So what you have to do, if you want to be a good violinist, is you have to adjust your intonation so quickly in fraction of seconds to the point that no one will notice. Jadi kalian harus bisa apa, adjust intonation kalian cepet banget. Dan make sure gak ada orang yang bisa denger. That's the key to be a good violinist. You have to keep adjusting your intonation. You must be very fast. That's why I told you you have to train your ears. You have to play slow at first, and then when you're used to it, your ears will be able to catch it uh, faster than before. And then you can adjust your intonation so quickly that no one will notice, trust me. And then the recommended practice method by Flash is ear training. So practice your attitude, practice your skills with long notes, play slow, and then no vibrato. Okay. And then the last one by Galamian, which I personally like. So he said, like a blind person, you have to rely on the sense of hearing and also sense of touch. So like a blind person, when a blind person walk, they will touch their surrounding to mark their path. Biar mereka tahu mereka jalannya kemana, mereka harus sentuh kanan kiri gitu kan. So same thing like playing your violin. So not just listening, but also your sense of touch. Learn to get familiar with the feel of the violin neck. So really measure how much you have to glide along the violin neck. Really remember how it feels to play D how it feels to play E, how, it's, how it feels to play A, and whatsoever. So one way, one, uh, one way that I did to practice is, let's say I want to play D. Okay, so I'll try to find D. Let's say, okay, that's D. I got it. And then I take my hand away from the violin and then put it back and try to remember how it feels to play D. Try many times until you can get the exact same intonation and always remember, try to remember how it feels. So not just by listening, but learn to get familiar with the feel of the violin neck. How much you have to stretch your hands, how much you should um, put your fingers together, everything you have to feel, okay? So basically perfecting your intonation is the combination of listening and also feeling, okay? So this one, I will explain to you. Why is it impossible to play in tune, according to Carl Flesch? So he did a series of calculation in his book, in this book. He did a very long mathematical calculations, and then basically he was trying to say that the difference between A to B flat, so A to B flat is 60 vibrations. So let's say 60 vibrations is x, variable x. And then the distance between A to B flat is less than 2 millimeters. Kecil banget jaraknya, cuma 2 milli doang. So let's say the, the distance is variable y, variable y. So 60x, ah, gila. I'm, I'm feeling so smart now, 60x equal to y. So x equals 0 0.03y. So according to Carl Flash, if you want to play in tune, you have to be able to place your fingers in a position that is accurate to 0 0.03 millimeters. And that is impossible. You know why? Because the size of our fingertips at the very tip is already 10 millimeters. So how will you be able to play something that is accurate to 0 0.03 millimeters? That's basically impossible according to him. So basically you have to fake it playing in tune is just an illusion so maybe 10 years later if you join an orchestra you just need to fake it let the concert master do it no i'm just kidding because your conductor will kill you don't do that so according to Carl flash um playing in tune is just an illusion 
So this is very interesting. I hope you guys find it interesting too. Okay, so if you can play in tune, oh my god guys, you are amazing. You have to reward yourself with a slice of red velvet cake from Union. Okay, so really if you can play in tune, you are amazing, you're breathtaking. Okay, so oh my god, this is the last topic already, vibrato. So when you play violin, one thing that comes to your mind will be vibrato. Beautiful tone, beautiful sound. So vibrato is basically the um, constant oscillations of note. It's like an embellishment to make your tone beautiful, right? So we have in violin, we have three types of vibrato. The first one is your hand or your wrist. This one, wrist. And then your arm, like entire arm. And then also your fingers. Basically, just vibrating your fingers. But the most common one that we use is the first one, the hand and wrist. So I'm not going to dip into this. I'm just going to tell you how to practice your vibrato. Because a lot of students have been asking me how to practice vibrato. So, okay, how to practice vibrato. First step, you have to rest your violin against the wall or anything sturdy. Jadi, disenderin di dinding kalian gitu, scrollnya. Tempelin ke dinding. You know why? Because the first time you learn how to do vibrato, instead of vibrating your note, you will vibrate your violin. Trust me. That's why you have to rest your violin against the wall. So it doesn't move. Okay? And then start in third position. So why third position? Oh, for those who don't play violin, I'm going to tell you what third position is. So third position is basically... Um, this is the normal place where you put your third finger and then you just shift with your first finger. So third finger, swap into first finger. This is what we call third position. So start in third position because that way you have a better support for your violin because your hand is closer to the body of the violin. This is a better support, okay? And then place your finger. If you have your violin, you can try. So start in third position and then you can place your second finger, I think, because that's the strongest finger. Okay, so place your fingers, and then once you get it, swing your wrist backwards. And then return. And then swing it backwards, and then return. And always remember to relax, because sometimes what makes you vibrate your entire violin is that you're nervous, you feel awkward, you don't know what to do. This is feels so weird, I don't know how to play vibrato. And you clench your hands, and you squeeze the neck. That's why you can't move. And then you vibrate your violin instead of vibrating the notes. So always relax. Santai aja. Apa? Join kalian. Jangan di lock. Do not lock the joint. Do not squeeze the violin neck. Relax. And then move it. Swing it backwards and then return. Swing it backwards and then return. Okay? You're comfortable with it? For you a good example to practice your vibrato. Okay, so this one is an exercise by Galamian. So what you can do is, um, if you see the score, stems up, yang tangkainya ke atas, itu original position. So just like that. If you see the stem up, just hold your notes like that. And then when you see the stem down, yang tangkainya ke bawah, you swing your wrist backwards. And then stem up, back. So you can do first in sets of two. So one, Two, one, two, one, two, one. And then when you get used to it, you can do a set of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then you can do four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then you can do six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Until you can do very fast. And that's how you practice your vibrato. This is so far um, the best exercise that really works for me, okay? So if you have time at home and you would like to practice your vibrato, I really recommend you trying this exercise. And if you need to take a screenshot of this, feel free to do so. If kalau ada guru biola yang mau screenshot buat muridnya, boleh, silahkan. Atau kalian, uh, student yang mau screenshot ini biar bisa latihan di rumah, silahkan. Okay, and then um, last one for you guys. So warning: too much vibrato is bad. 
and never ever use vibrato to conceal your bad intonation. If your intonation is bad, you have to fix your intonation first. Do not use vibrato to conceal or to cover your bad intonation. Okay? It's like kalau kalian ada pimple and then kalian pakai concealer. Okay, it works. But then you have to try to get rid of the pimple instead of putting concealer all the time. So same thing. So instead of concealing your intonation with vibrato, you have to fix your intonation first and then you learn how to use vibrato. Okay? And then our, Leopold our, this guy, is being very harsh. He's telling you, if you are playing with too much vibrato, you are basically worse than useless. And I know some of us here who grew up in Asian Chinese household, we are so used to get this from our parents. Like, you are useless. Especially if you decided to do music instead of being a doctor or a lawyer. I know we get this a lot. So yeah, don't make your life any harder. Use less vibrato. Too much vibrato is bad, okay? All right, so before I finish our session today, I have this very amazing quote from Carl Flesch. So, quality and ampleness of tone, good intonation, technical proficiency, even listening and hearing correctly, these all can be taught and improved. The limbs and organs needed to carry out these functions are capable of being observed and influenced. So for those of you who has been learning musical instrument anything, and then you're at the edge of giving up because you think you don't have talent or you're useless, I don't want to do this anymore, don't worry about it. Please don't give up because everything can be taught and you will improve. One day you will improve. And your hands, your fingers are capable of being trained. Jadi tangan dan jari kita itu bisa dilatih. Jadi jangan menyerah. Playing, learning a musical instrument requires years and years. And it will never be easy. So don't give up because trust me, everything is teachable and you will improve. So buat kalian promosi dikit nih. So for those of you who are planning to, you know, enroll to music university or maybe you want to study music further and you're still not sure about what to do, you're not sure what we did in music school, I have some videos on my YouTube channel that you can check out. So don't forget to subscribe. And then also you can follow me on Instagram at kimchi underscore gk. And if you have further question, you can send me a message, you can send me DM on Instagram. I will try to reply you. I will try to answer every questions that you have. So I think that's all I have for today. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Wow. I bet everyone must learn a lot, especially the violinist, right? Yeah, I, hope, I really hope you guys learn something. Or even though you don't play the violin, I hope at least you now have some imagination yes, how to play absolutely. the violin. <laughs> because even though we are not playing the violin, one day we are all play in an ensemble where we need to know the other instruments as well, right? True, so true. actually, I just now forgot to introduce who is Miss Krecia. So actually, Miss <laughs> Krecia is born in Palembang. And she actually started her piano lesson at the age of five. Yes, she started playing the piano first before she played the violin. And she actually, besides from violin, she learns the electron or the organ. And she actually is an active performer in both classical and contemporary music. And you know what? She has won the third place in Yamaha Electron Professional Performance Competition. And she is now currently an active pianist and organist, having a diploma of ATCL in piano before she have made a life-changing decision to be a violinist major. She studied her Bachelor of Music in the University of UCSI, Malaysia, and is the assistant concertmaster in their orchestra. And currently, she is doing her postgraduate in Australian Institute of Music in Sydney, and also the concert master of AIM String Ensemble. Yeah. So actually, that's her bio, her very short bio. And I think we have a question for Miss Krisha in the chat box. Am I right? Yeah. She actually has some questions. Mm. Oh, okay. No. So does anyone have any questions? Anything you would like to reconfirm with uh, her? Collarbone is tulang leher. Thank you, Aldi. Is it tulang leher, though? 
collarbone. I don't know, to be honest, I don't know. Okay, anyone has a question? You can actually turn on your audio if you have a question so we can hear you. Kalau ada yang mau nanya, semoga aku bisa jawab. Silakan. Anyone? What is that squeaky sound we made when we first started playing violin? Okay, I have a question. Jadi waktu kalian baru main nih, pas awal-awal belajar, you will make a like a squeaky sound, right? And most probably that is because you're not used to it. You still feel awkward, so you press your bow too hard. And then you will make a squeaky sound. But when you're used to it, and if you tilt your bow just a little bit, if you tilt that way, if you can see, I tilt the, the, tilt the bow that way. That will make the sound um, less squeaky. And also you have to apply less pressure on your bow. And then one more thing that will help you to avoid that squeaky sound is that you move your contact point. Jadi, contact point itu where you put your bow on the string. So if you put your bow way too close to the bridge, you will make a squeaky sound. So you can move further from the bridge and go closer to the fingerboard. And then the sound will be a lot more, um, not so squeaky, like more mellow, like more toned down. And then, so I'll, I'll just summarize everything. Put less pressure on your right arm. Only tekan. Get, um, usually my teacher would told me, just use gravity. Get pakai gravitasi aja. Jangan ditambah lagi sama sama tangan kita, cukup gravitasi aja, just gravity. And then move away from bridge, move closer to the fingerboard, or maybe in between your fingerboard and bridge. That's how you will avoid the squeaky sound. Thank you, Yolanda. Uh, actually, Yolanda has another question. Oh, Does okay. the price of violent effects or is just the pure mistake? Hmm. Um, well, I think when you just start and you have a Stradivarius, but you still press your bow too hard, same thing will happen. You will still make a squeaky sound. Jadi, I think expensive violin um, is very significant in terms of the sound projection, especially if you're playing a big recital hall, like you have 10,000 audience. If you play with the Stradivarius, the sound projects really well. That is the biggest difference, I think. So when you just start it, I think it doesn't really matter how much your violin is. If you're pressing too much, you will still make a squeaky sound. So the key is really, um, so the key is really on your bow. Don't press too hard, and then move away from the bridge. Okay. Another question is, how do you know if the rosin is too much or too less? Well, I think if you apply your rosin too much, and then you start playing, you will see like a little like white dust just flying everywhere. I think that's a little bit too much. So sometimes when I apply the rosin, after I apply the rosin, I shake my bow one time. That helps you to get rid of some small particles of the rosin. Okay. Okay. The next one is from Maggie Nugroho. Seringkali ketika menggesek kena senar sebelahnya, masalahnya itu di mana? Masalahnya itu ada di angle tangan kanan kalian. Jadi, terkadang when we play and you touch another string is basically the angle of your right arm sometimes if you um if your angle is suitable for two strings you will hit both strings yeah so one way to practice is really just try your open string a lot and then be very conscious with your right arm and then always change the angle if you touch so let's say you're playing a string and then you touch the that means you're leaning way too much to that side, right? So very simple. Just move away. Just let your arm down a little bit. Move your arm closer to your body. Jadi, instead of raising your arm too much, because if you do that, you will definitely touch the other string. So when you want to play A, just pure A, just relax your arm, move your arm down closer to your body. It's Everything is the angle of your right arm, if you touch other string. Okay, next one, how much rosin okay. so ros should we add to the bow? I think just now she has answered. Um, how much rosin is, I think it's very hard to tell you exactly how much rosin. It, it depends on the condition of your bow. 
if if it's very slippery, if it's you if you really really need a lot of rosin, I think you can just apply a lot. Just be just be very generous, and then just shake your bow one or two times, and then it should be fine. I mean, you you really can tell when you play if it's too much or too little, right? So I I can't tell you how much exactly, but if you think you really need rosin, just apply generously, and then just shake it to get rid of the small particles to get rid of the dust. Okay, we actually have a request from Chi Fan Hui. Can you please demonstrate the three types of vibrato? Oh, I have a lot of questions. Okay, so <laughs> young wrist, young wrist, basically the one we just did. Right, that's the wrist. And then color arm. I think the arm vibrato is not very popular because it's very... It's such a big movement, but basically you're just moving your entire arm. Like a lot bigger movement. Instead of doing this, you really move your arm. And then finger vibrato, usually when you play high notes and you have you need very intense vibrato. Like you're not moving your wrist, just your finger. I don't know if you can see, but I'm just gonna explain one more time. Really color wrist, you swing your wrist. And then your arm is like you're doing a bigger movement. And then finger, usually, is because it's very intense, finger vibrato is the most intense type of vibrato. Usually we do that when you need to play high notes. And then when you play high notes, you can't really move your wrist, right? So you just like vibrate your fingers very intensely. I hope that helps. Next one is from Ricky. Mm -hmm. Kadang kalau kita main di senar i terutama kadang suaranya suka berdenging. Itu kenapa ya? Oh, okay. That is a very common problem in E string. So, normally if you want to avoid um, suara yang berdenging or like the like high frequency kind of sound, you have to land you have to have a good grip on the string first and then you play. Kalau kalian Main main cepet cepet cepet. Get you play very quickly, and then you touch the E string immediately without having a strong grip. You will make that sound, the high frequency. And also, I think the string is also um, one of the problem. Sometimes, um, kadang kadang the E string itu kayak ada plastic. You have a small plastic thing that you can put on your bridge. This one helps a little bit, not much, but it does help. So, so I would say to avoid that squeaky high frequency sound, you have to have a good grip on the string first when you get it and then you play. If you don't have a good grip, trust me, you will make the sound. But it's very common. There's no, uh, I actually asked my teacher, gimana caranya avoid that? And he would tell me, God, you will, you will make that sound. There's no way to escape from the high frequency E sound. You just need to have a very good grip on it. And then the angle, also, you have to find the angle apa harus agak kesana, apa harus agak kesini. You have to experiment because even me, I still make that sound. It's very hard to avoid. Okay, a very similar question from Maggie. Kenapa senar iku sering putus padahal baru seminggu atau dua minggu dipakai? Uh, kenapa senar iku sering putus? Um, hmm. Ini, there are many factors. Maybe the humidity of your room. Kamar kamu mungkin terlalu lembab. Atau terlalu kering juga bisa. Atau mungkin um, waktu kamu tune violin, mungkin nggak pelan-pelan. I think one way you could do is when you want to tune your E string, press down on the string. I always do that because I'm afraid it will snap to my face. So press down and then just turn very lightly. And then I think for E string, use the fine tuner a little bit more. Tapi to tell you why your E string broke very often, I think it could be the way you keep your violin, maybe your room, or maybe you keep it too long in your car. Jangan taruh di bagasi mobil, itu juga bahaya. Atau mungkin kamar kamu terlalu panas, atau kamar kamu terlalu dingin. Jadi, just try to find the best temperature to keep your violin, because you also need to take care of the string. And because each string is very thin, it's very vulnerable. So, if you tune it, tune very slow, use your fine tuner, and then try your best not to keep your violin in open air. Jadi, selalu tutup case-nya, terus jangan taruh di tempat yang terlalu panas atau terlalu dingin. Okay, we have another question from Emanuela. I think I can answer this. Can one take violin as a major in the 
study of music or do we always have to take piano? Of course, no. You can take anything. Yeah, Natasha, you can yeah, explain. Uh -huh. Yeah, actually, I'm majoring in piano, actually, and you also can take uh, vocal, drums, and every instruments that you would like. And do you know there's also majoring in composition where you actually make music? So actually, you can major in any instruments that you want. Which you can department? major in conducting. We have a conductor here. Yeah, we and even music here. engineer. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. So the next one is from Yessi. Can you explain to us again about the stem down on the vibrato and when is the right time to practice vibrato? Should all the position, should we know all the position or only just one position? Okay, okay. good, good question. I'm going to share my screen again. Thank you. Okay, so this one I will explain one more time. Jadi, take your time to see the score, yeah? So, kalau kalian lihat yang stamps up, so stamp, stamps up, put your hand in the original position. Okay, I need to see myself, sorry. Okay, stamps up, and yeah, okay. Hands in original position. Jadi, kayak gini aja, cukup. And then, kalau kalian lihat yang stamps-nya down, yang ke arah bawah, swing your wrist backwards. Jadi, kayak dorong gitu wrist-nya. Tuh, oke? Okay? And then, kan balik lagi tuh. Come back to your original position. And then, swing it back, return. So, at first, you can practice in two. I'm gonna make a very funny sound, but bear with me. Itu yang dua, that's two, and then you can do three. So like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then you can do four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then do six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sampai akhirnya kalian bisa main cepet. And then, um, when you get used to the third position, go back to first position. I tell you to practice in third position because you have better support for the violin. But then after you get used to it, go back to first position. Jadi harus dilatih di semua posisi. But first step, you can practice in third position. After you get used to third position, you can go back to first position. Apakah cukup jelas? Okay. The next one is from Marvelin, how many hours should we practice a day? So, musicians out there, how many hours should we practice? How many hours, guys? <laughs> Young musician, tulis dong di chat. If you're a musician, let, let me know how many hours you practice every yeah, day. Yeah, I think if you know. Hours. Ling Ling, 40 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, Ling Ling practice 40 hours. Uh -huh. Right. So, actually, well, uh, me thousand. personally, me personally, because I told you the story, right? I, I played the violin in the wrong way for eight years. And then it took me eight months to fix my basics. I, 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 I literally practiced how to play with a straight ball for two semesters. So at that time, I had a very bad self-doubt. So I was like, aku nggak berbakat ya, when musik, apa nggak usah sekolah musik aja lah, gitu ya. So that time, when I was so sad and so embarrassed of myself, I practiced like, four to six hours a day for the first two semesters until the third semester I can play Vivaldi concerto immediately because I play practice four hours a day but now please don't ask me <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Korean drama you guys so. <laughs> so actually Angeline is asking miss any suggestion to reduce the pain in the fourth finger the uh, Ah, let me see. Any suggestion to reduce the pain in fourth finger? Well, um, I'm going to be very realistic, but because your pinky is very weak, so it will you will definitely feel a lot of pain at first. But if you find it pain painful, you have to stop for like, maybe give it a rest for like one day and then try it again the next day. But... One way to reduce the pain is, this is very cliche, but practice. Because if you practice, you will make that, what do you call that? Like another layer of skin, kapalan, bahasa Indonesia. 
when you get that, pas kalian udah kapalan, when your skin is getting very hot, trust me, you won't feel anything. But in order to get that, in order to get your um, harder skin, harder skin layer, you have to hurt it first. Kalian harus sakiti dulu kelingking kalian. Jadi karena dia luka, dia bakal develop kulit yang keras. Nah, itu. Once you get that, you, trust me, you won't feel any pain. But at first, it, it is very painful, I know. It, it just takes time. Trust me, it, it takes a lot of time. But if you feel it's too painful to handle, just give it a rest, give it a break, stop for one day, and then try again the next day. You'll be fine. If you're forced to play it every day, you, you won't get better. Yeah, I think that's called the dead skin, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another yeah. one from McDonnie. Uh, is it normal to have left shoulder pain when trying to hold the violin? Not normal. You should not feel any pain when you play the violin. So I guess if you have a pain on your left shoulder, maybe you are supporting too much with your left shoulder. Maybe, maybe you do this too much because probably, maybe one thing, your shoulder rest is not high enough. So I have the shoulder rest that I can adjust. If I twist, it will go higher and go lower. So I guess you just need to adjust your shoulders a little bit higher so you don't have to support your violin entirely with your left shoulder. Because if you do this all the time, 30 minutes, definitely you'll feel pain on your left shoulder. So one more thing, support your violin lightly with your left hand too. So not entirely with left shoulder and not entirely with left arm, but support lightly by shoulder and support lightly by left arm. Jadi tidak boleh sakit. Kalau sakit berarti salah. Okay. Actually, Audrey Budiman has a question. Gimana cara biar kelingking kita bisa melengkung terus? Because she tends to make it straight. Yeah. And it should be curved. Yeah. I think I think Natasha, you can explain what Miss Chi told you in UCSI, the pinky practice. Uh, it's, yeah. it's applicable to violin. Actually, yeah. Actually, even for pianists, I actually do practice. My hand, I play a very loud note and make sure that my hands are being very steady. How do you test it when you hit your hand? It, it doesn't collapse. collapse. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't collapse. Yeah, so it should be as strong as a stone or maybe a metal. Yeah, it should mm -hmm. be that strong actually. So, um, one thing you can practice without the violin. So, Audrey, if you have a table at home, anything, or like a piano surface or anything, so you put your fingers and then you tap your table with your pinky. Kamu harus coba sampai ada suaranya, sampai kayak tok, tok, tok. Right, Natasha? I think you did that. Yeah. Yeah, it must be this kind yeah, of really song. knock the table until it I mean, makes sounds. Yes. And makes your sense. finger must still be very good. Your finger will get stronger. Yes. Okay. Actually, there's a very nice question. How do children, especially beginners, learn how to tune their violin? Um... I would not recommend children to tune their own violin. So at first, I think the teacher has to do the job. Um, but if really you need your child to tune their own violin, I think you really need a good combination of using this, the pecs, and also the fine tuners. Because if you rely too much on this, I'm so afraid you will break your strings. So, and also now, because we have a lot of technology, you can install the tuner app on your phone. And then it will really show you how much you have to tune your violin sharper of letter. And then uh, one more thing, when you tune your violin, press down on the string. Jadi, tahan stringnya pakai, you can use your thumb to press down on the string and then move the pecs a little bit, not too much. So not, don't do a full rotation. So always a little by little. So not too much, don't do if it's so bad, so until you get it slowly and always press down on the string, okay. And then I think if you're a beginner and you are not sensitive enough to tell the notes, you can always rely on the tuner, okay. So, a few more questions before we end. Actually, kenapa biola yang jarang dimainkan pasti fales? Um, Karena kalau if you keep your violin too long in your case, I think all the temperature, all the humidity will affect your violin. So if you don't really play your violin, uh, your tuner will never stay in place. Like the more you play and then the more you tune it every day, 
it will get used to it and it will stay better. If you just keep it on your case, it will just rest there and then the temperature will affect everything. And then if you don't take proper care, maybe this part will be very um, hot or maybe very slippery. So it just goes out of tune very easily. So really take your violin out of the case maybe every other day. Don't just let it rest there because it's so bad. All the temperature, the humidity, apalagi di Indo, yang sangat-sangat lembab, it's very bad for your violin. So maybe that's why. So, but how do you answer to the question by Marvelyn? She said that, is it okay if she did not keep her violin in the case because she thinks that she's going to practice again the next day? Um, I think it's not very safe. I think it's always better to keep your violin in the case just for safety reason. And I think um, it's the very basic stuff, keeping your violin um, in a proper way. I think it's one thing that you have to learn. Also responsibility, right? Later on when you go to university or maybe you play in an orchestra, you have to keep your violin properly. So I think even though you're going to practice your violin tomorrow, just take it as your responsibility. Tanggung jawab kalian buat merawat instrument kalian. Jadi, even though besok mau main atau nanti malam mau main, disimpan aja biar lebih aman. Sama buat ngebiasain diri kalian untuk merawat instrumen dengan lebih baik. Anggap aja sebagai tanggung jawab deh buat jagain instrumen kalian. Okay, a very last question from Immanuella. Any position to be avoided to prevent injury? Any positions to be avoided? Let me think. Well, um, I would not say and there is a position that you have to avoid but i would say stick to the basic like if you do the basic stuff that we already went through like hold it this way and then um hold your bow in the proper way i think you'll be safe from injury that's all i can tell you as long as you don't do like funny stuff like maybe holding your violin like this or like this as long as you don't go too far off and then i mean you can tell when you're starting to hurt in yourself right so as long as you stick to the basic and then you don't do funny silly stuff i think you'll be totally safe from any injury and i think violin is quite safe in terms of hurting yourself i think i've heard a lot of stories from pianists not violinist, right? Yes. If there's any pianist here, maybe you can tell a story about, I don't know, injuries and playing the piano. Because piano is a lot more, um, apa ya, like be harsh, you don't see? It's more harsh. I think than violin. So just stick to the basic. You're going to be safe. So that's the last question for this session. Okay, so mm -hmm. before we end our session, maybe we can take a, a group photo. So everyone, can you please turn on your video? Let's take a picture and smile. Okay, so I'm going to start. Ready? Is everyone ready? Okay, one, two, three. Some more. Did we get everyone? Uh, no, but we are divided into two pictures. One more time, one, two. One, two, three. Okay, great. So thank you everyone for joining us and also Miss Krisha for coming to give a very influent, very nice workshop to all of us. I hope everyone learned something. So if you have, if you want to learn more and know more about message our, me. yeah, you can message her actually. She just now gave her Instagram so you can DM her actually. Okay. And for our further workshops, actually we are having workshops almost every week. So you can check out iramamusicstudio.com slash events. Okay, so you can check a lot of events out there. And most of them are for free. So you just can register. That's like how you register for this event. Okay, if no more questions, maybe we can end our meeting here. Thank you, Thank everyone. You, everyone. You are amazing. Kita jangan leave dulu ya, Nat. Oke. Thank you, teman-temanku. Walaupun kalian tidak main biola, tapi nonton, itu terharu deh.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay.